Patrick Cook here. So where we left off in the last session was me attempting to uh, manipulate the lighting so that I could get a better sense of the of how the uh, uh, the, the Mandelbulb 3D graphic was developing. Uh, let's continue that process now. All right, so if we take a look at uh, our Mandelbulb, we, we have the main screen, we have the, uh, the navigator, and uh, I, I have uh, saved uh, my work just in case we run into trouble. Now, what I was attempting to do was utilize the lighting panel uh, to be able to uh, dial in the lighting, not the coloring, but the lighting, so that I got the best possible details that I could uh, from this particular um, Mandelbulb design. Okay, uh, and we have talked about the um, your your six panels of lighting, your six sources of lighting, uh, the global illumination, and we talked about uh, the uh, your X and Y angles of your light source as well as the relative to object. Uh, we talked about those particular topics in the, in the last session. Let's take a little bit different, uh, 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 look at a couple different things now pertaining to lighting. Now, uh, color and lighting uh, from this point uh, are pretty much uh, intertwined. I wanna be careful to stay with lighting for now. I wanna I want to show you the controls that pertain to lighting, although color is involved. Uh, that's, just, that's just the way the Mandelbulb 3D application is built. So let's take a look here. Now we have, we have uh, uh, four tabs here. We have the object, we have ambient, we have a dynamic fog, defog, dynamic fog, and this back pick, back picture. Uh, we don't we don't care about this back picture for this particular um, animation project. Let's go back to object tab. Now uh, here I have a control for specular. Now the specular would be let's see if I can make an adjustment and see the impact. Oh, we're not really having an impact on this particular graphic. I'll come back to specular. Now the diffusion lighting tab okay now there we're starting to make a difference now you see you see now this is interesting watch the main the main screen as i dial down the diffusion uh details start to come out in in my graphic if i really crank it up the details get lost uh in the highlights uh, basically the, in the highlight areas, the, um, the image is, uh, what we say in photography, blown out. And we lose detail. That's, that's the key point here. We're losing detail. So if I dial this, well, all the way down, then I really have depleted the light source as the light source interacts with the object. Now, I, you notice up here, I have not modified the global light or its intensity or its color. So that global light is still there. But what I've done with this particular control is I have modified the light that interacts with the object. And when I say interacts, it could be reflected, it could be uh, diffused, it could be absorbed. And basically, it's the interaction of the light to the object or to the scene, whatever the case may be. So you see here now, if I dial this down, now I don't know what these, uh, these dimension, uh, what these slider um, uh, marks uh, mean. I don't know what they mean in terms of measurement. So we can't really say, uh, you, know, uh, you know, always go for uh, slider notch number one, that might be a 30. Well, we just don't know what the increments mean, but that's okay, we don't, we don't need to know that. 
even if internally to the software there was a meaning to these notches, we don't have access to that information, so just uh, don't worry about it. But the, the rule is, is that the further left we are on the slider, the less diffusion that we have within the scene. The greater furthest to the right, the more diffusion. Um, another way of looking at this is that we lose detail by uh, having too much lighting uh, and we also lose detail by having too little lighting. All right, so, so this, is a, uh, this is an important uh, adjustment to dial in your lighting. Again, we're not interested in color, we're interested in lighting. All right, so I'm going to, I'm gonna dial this in. I'm looking for the best possible detail that I have. Uh, and I'm really looking in this area right here for detail. And I say I'm looking in this area for detail because I already know that I'm going to modify the structure of this, uh, of this, this mandel bulb scene uh, because I don't like all of this background here. It just gets lost. It, it doesn't have enough detail to uh, contribute to uh, the scene, the picture. Okay. So, all right, so now uh, we're not gonna talk about the map just yet. We're not gonna talk about color cycling. Uh, we're not gonna talk about this area or this area because that pertains to lighting. Uh, I'm sorry, coloring. Lighting is what I'm interested in right now. <clears throat> now, uh, let's go further down here and uh, we'll, we'll talk about the, uh, the color variation on Z. Now, if you recall from a session back or maybe two back, I was saying to not get caught up in your coloring too soon because coloring in a, the Mandelbald 3D environment uh, has a, a close relationship to the Z axis. Now you see what I mean. Color variation on Z. All right, so this little bugger, and we're going to talk about this a little later because this is really coloring, all right? So uh, what I can do is I can actually shift my colors uh, along the Z-axis. The Z-axis would be uh, from you, away from you, all right, all right, in, in, in that direction, not Y, not X, Z. So you see here, that this particular control is evidence of what I was saying earlier is that your color is closely associated with the z-axis and if you start trying to colorize your your Mandelbulb object or your scene then you come back here and you make an adjustment your colors are going to get thrown off that's why I separate lighting from color in terms of the workflow uh, well, let's pop down here and let's uh, take a look at gamma. All right, now I'm going to tweak this up here and you see what's going on is that my gamma adjustment is actually changing contrast. Uh, and contrast is the difference between uh, uh, no light and full light. All right, so a gamma is the range between no light and full light. Uh, and that will have an impact on the contrast. All right, and the contrast is the difference between no light and full light. So if I adjust this gamma all the way down to its capabilities, this is what I get. If I adjust it all the way up, this is what I get. So your gamma is really part of your lighting. Obviously, the gamma will impact your colors as well. But again, we're separating lighting from coloring for purposes of trying to dial in a really good scene without getting carried away with the color. Because, because we are not done adjusting this Mandelbulb um, 
uh, graphic. We're not done with this. I don't like what I have here, but I wanted to, I wanted to, I wanted to settle in the lighting so that I better, I could better see uh, the object that I was developing. Uh, these are presets down here, uh, color related. We'll talk about those another time. Okay. Okay. So, okay. So let's end this session now. But what I have here is a fairly decent lighting scenario that enables me to see better the, the graphic that I have to work with. All right, so we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna end this session now, and when we start up again, I'm gonna tweak this mandel bulb design a little bit more because I'm not quite happy with what I've got here, but we're close. I'll see you in the next session.